This is the Dumont Television Network. For 11 years, the Dumont Television Network was very much a part of America's broadcasting landscape. But its path to the airwaves was far less conventional than its rivals. And while that likely led to its early demise, it made Dumont one of television's earliest innovators. Well, Alan Dumont was an engineer who was a, helped develop the cathode ray tube and the oscilloscope, and uh, he was a tech guy. A tech guy who founded Dumont Laboratories in 1931. He was one of the first manufacturers of televisions in the United States. So Dumont won the sort of the, the race to uh, come up with the first receivers, which they started producing in 1938. Dumont TV sets quickly became the envy of the industry. But in the late 1930s, not many people were buying TVs. Regularly scheduled programming was nearly non-existent. So Mr. Dumont came to a simple realization. <laughs> Once you've manu manufactured the, the piece of furniture going to the home, you needed a reason why people would buy it, which means they needed programming, and so he developed the programming and the network followed after that. Throughout the first half of the 1940s, Dumont's road to network broadcasting followed a long line of experimentation. And they also had to develop their own star system because NBC and CBS, uh, they had the stars of the radio networks that, that they worked with. They had the business relationships with the people that owned stations. And so they had to carve out a new niche. Wrestling was an early thing they, uh, that Dumont was involved in. It would take until 1946 before Dumont began broadcasting regularly scheduled programming. And despite having neither the experience nor the money of giants like CBS and NBC, Dumont made swift inroads. So they were able to get some stars. I mean, Jackie Gleason, the relatively unknown stars. Jackie Gleason began his career at Dumont. Well, I could have had Cadillacs, and I could have had manicured nails, and I could have had fancy clothes. But I didn't throw my money away on anything foolish like that. No, sir. I took what little money I had and got a twin burial plot for us. <laughs> then later on, uh, this was several years into the network, uh, the most popular show on television was uh, the Texaco Star Theater with Milton Berle, uh, who was very close associated with NBC and RCA. And, and Dumont came up with the idea, well, we're going to counter-program. We're going to give this Catholic uh, uh, priest by the name of Bishop Sheen an opportunity. We're going to put him up right against uh, uh, Milton Berle. And, uh, and, and Bishop Sheen started to beat Milton Berle. It is a bigger world than we think. Stir your soul. Start a wing, and you will discover it to be the wing of an angel of God. I would say the peak of Dumont probably would have been uh, the early 50s, maybe from 53 to 50, 52 to 53, 54. Uh, by 54, uh, the signs were on the wall that the Dumont network probably wouldn't survive. The inexperience and inferior financials Dumont was able to skirt in the early goings began to catch up with the network. The Dumont network held on until August of 56. Its last broadcast was a boxing match. But the innovation and creation weaved over its short lifespan would not be lost, particularly on the first generation to grow up with television. If you were a young boy growing up in the early 50s, Captain Video uh, on Dumont was every bit as popular as Howdy Doody on NBC. Stand by for Captain Video and his Video Rangers. The defining moment for me was on my 10th birthday, June 18th, 1954. And on my 10th birthday, I got the boss's nephew tour of the Dumont Telecenter in New York and I sat in Captain Video's spaceship, and I met Captain Video, and I never wanted to do anything in my life but be involved in television. All set, Ranger? All set, Captain. And turn ship full speed ahead for Comet X. It's been called the Forgotten Network, but Dumont commands a much more worthy legacy, a pioneer on the frontier of television broadcasting. <laughs>